Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna talk about what makes a really good quant, what sets them apart. Um, and this is in response to a LinkedIn post that I have commented on, and many of you have commented on, and I've gotten emails about. Um, I'm gonna summarize because this post is quite long here. Uh, I've noticed in the quant space in the last 10 to 15 years, Roughly since SBF, so Sam Bankman freed uh, the crook and criminal of FTX, the crypto firm, all that stuff. I uh, started his trading career. Uh, yes, there are a lot more quants than there used to be. Yes, partly this proliferated in response for quants becoming uh, more competitive and difficult. And yes, the quants like SBF are super qualified on paper with great STEM degrees from allegedly great institutions like Harvard. I'm going to hand wave here SBF. I don't qualify as a quant anyways, whole other discussion. Um, but then it goes on to say, you know, but the quality of those quants uh, has maybe actually decreased in the last decade. When I say quality, what I mean is that some recently minted quants seem to lack intuition about markets and are not encouraged uh, by their firms to gain that intuition. Uh, they are tasked with building models without wondering how or why those models should work in predicting the relevant fundamentals, KPIs, or prices. Uh, I've often had this experience with new grads who had physics, stats, or CS backgrounds, but didn't understand markets or what moved them. Uh, then he goes on to a little pitch about his firm. Many quants these days think about shoving data into a trading algo to predict returns over some sample, uh, but not about what personal and often irrational forces among asset managers, institutional traders, retail traders, company management, regulators, and intermediaries um, might drive asset prices here. So this was the comment. This was the post that was made. I commented back here and put, I would argue that the bar or standard for quant has been lowered over the last 15 years as universities try and profit off the trend. I find it very hard to find people with the proper mix of skills. To your point, the intuition of finance as well as quantitative methods seems to have been lost as schools try and rush through the courses. Now, I'm going to respond with one more piece here. I'm going to add some more insight into here. Uh, I was uh, chatting with Manuel Derman here, and I asked him, what advice would you give to quants today for an enjoyable career? He responded and said, I don't know. It's such a different world from when I started out. As I wrote in my book, he's referring to my life as a quant, um, we were happy amateurs. It was a new field. It was fun. Try to find some area you really like, an area that is underdeveloped, uh, is my advice, and try to stay close to the practitioners or trading side where the real problems come from here. So, You've got this post, you've got my response, and you've got Emmanuel Derman uh, commenting a little bit, not in regards to this, but just life in general, as I'm asking quant questions. And the piece I wanna point out the most here is going to be the intuition piece here. So they're saying they don't have the intuition for the markets. And that's what this author is complaining about. They don't understand the markets here. So I'm gonna argue, I don't know, I'd have to pull up uh, this guy's profile. He's a CEO and whatnot. I would argue he's probably more on the business side of this. And what I mean is that typically finance people, business people consistently complain, oh, Dimitri, the quants just don't understand the business side. And yet you have people like me on the, on the quant side saying, oh, those business people just don't understand the quant side. And the reality is everybody expects the quants to do the math, the stats, the computer science, and the finance, and the business side, and tell everybody else how to do their jobs because obviously we're really smart people, which is annoying because that's not what we're being paid to do here being paid to build models. Um, and so to hit on this, you know, what's the difference here? What What's differentiating the quant space here? What's really separating people out? So I see this when I hire, for example, and just to let you know, I can barely ever find you know, true, really rigorous quants. There are a few of you out there, so big shout out. Um, that have been subscribers for a long time um, that I've actually worked with. And like, as I've worked with you, it's like you've moved from one country to another country. And then it's like, you know, you need to get these degrees. They went out and they've paid all this money to get these degrees. And they're churning through the process because they have actual passion and interest, not focus on money. Um, so I think this is what's differentiating a lot of this as well here. Um, the intuition piece doesn't come from a textbook in the sense that you don't just go out there, you take a course, you get a master's degree, you get a PhD, and now there's a whole population of people saying, Dimitri, getting a master's and a PhD, like, oh, that's so much money and that's so much time. And let me tell you, that is the easiest piece. That's the easiest piece. Getting a master's, getting a graduate, getting a PhD, that's the easy piece, okay? Thousands of you now are being minted every single year with these degrees. And most of you are quite terrible at being a quant, which is understandable because you're 
just coming out of grad school here. Um, but the piece that you're missing is that you don't continue the learning process here. And so somebody asked me, what is the proper mix of skills? Um, while the proper mix of skills is in-depth intuition and math, stats, computer science, uh, so more specifically, I define quant here, math and stats utilizing computer science to test ideas applied to the financial industry. Okay, you notice I didn't tell you the focus was finance. I didn't tell you the focus was computer science. Um, the focus is math and statistics at a deep intuitional level here, understanding the dynamics, the pieces. Um, one of my biggest complaints biggest complaints um, is the majority of quantitative graduated graduate school understand topics that are taught and regurgitated, unfortunately, quite terribly like stochastic calculus. It's on every stinking resume I read. And what they put on there is, oh, I know stochastic calculus. No, you don't. You do not know stochastic calculus because you didn't take an actual math course. What you do know is you do know how to apply stochastic calculus only to derivative pricing, only for American options and European options and you know whatever ones they covered in your course. And then you get in the real world and we don't regurgitate these equations. Okay, the real world, you have to actually solve problems. You have to actually apply the math to new fields. Um, firms have realized everything in those textbooks for the most part. Um, it's the foundations. It's somebody writing a book, putting it in X amount of pages, trying to simplify it down. You have to eat, sleep, and breathe quant space here. I mean, I've been at this for nine years now. I'm closing in on a decade I think, here in like April, May, something like that of this next year here. Because I still have stacks of textbooks all over my office here. You can't see them here, but I have stacks of textbooks. I've, you know, when I did the undergrad book reviews, there's all these extra books I want to read. I want to go over the material. I want to dig deeper here. Um, you need to understand these things and to get intuition. Um, I was reading um, Jay Cummings, one of his books, either his proofs book or his real analysis. I believe it's the proofs book. Um, and he mentions in there that essentially the way you learn mathematics is you kind of learn the mechanics up front. Okay, you go through the process of this number plus this number equals this number. Uh, to take a derivative, you know, you take the exponent, you move it down, you do this. You learn the chain rule. You learn, you're learning the mechanics. You're learning the how to actually do it. You have no intuition of what's actually going on. You don't fully grasp or understand the math itself. If you don't understand the math, you can't apply it to anything. You can't apply it to finance. You can't apply it to marketing. You can't apply it to business. You can't apply it to, I don't know, engineering, anything else. The problem we have is that these grad schools are churning students out and they're skimming over these topics. And I hate, I absolutely hate the curriculum now. Stop teaching stochastic calculus for derivatives. This is my big griping complaint here. Uh, your graduates can't even figure out how to do an OLS regression because they fail every assumption under the book when they're trying to fit it to things like time series because you didn't teach them anything. Um, again, you don't have the intuition. You're not going into the depths. Um, everybody now seems to be a generalist. Um, so again, going along my advice here, going along a little bit of Emmanuel Dermans here, you know, as he kind of mentioned, you know, it was a new field and they were amateurs. They were exploring, they were applying, they were trying to figure things out deep into their careers here. They didn't have an employer sitting on their back saying, you know, you know what, you need to go look up this topic, this topic, this topic, and this topic, go read these, and then you're done. Right, there's way too many check the box people out there that are like, Dimitri, tell me the five steps to be a quant. I'll check these five boxes and I'll be them. And I've made this statement, I, I think back in 20, probably back in like 2018, 2019 maybe, um, that quants isn't a state you reach. You don't become a quant. You don't get to some state and you're like, okay, I got a job, right? I worked at a hedge fund, I worked at a bank. I developed a model, like check the box, I'm a quant. No, being a quant is this lifelong pursuit. It's learning, it's reading, it's understanding. I've been doing this for you guys, like I mentioned, like nine years here. I've been digging through textbooks. And as I work on new projects and I work for new firms, new things are consistently coming up, new issues are coming up. And I'm working in um, quantum mechanics right now for a problem at work in the banking kind of loan space here, quantum mechanics. Um, I'm not a physicist. I don't understand the application to physics. So I have to go back and I have to read and I have to look at things and figure out how other people are applying it. Then I look how I'm applying it. Then I go back and I'm reading, you know, books on basic probability theory and I'm going back into um, old measure theory books and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what the heck is going on here. But what's the real issue I think that we kind of stand out with here a little bit is that I don't see a lot of people that really just love the field. Like, I love the field. I don't care about making money. I don't care about general financing. Like, mm, it's a loan and 
you know, the time value of money. And like, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't excite me, right? But the math and the stats and doing the research side of it, that's the quant side of it. It's doing the research. That is ex- like thrilling. It's exciting. It really gets me going. Um, I feel terrible though, constantly, because I have this massive stack of textbooks. And of course I'm like, oh, I, I need some more textbooks. What other topics should I look at? Should I look at different textbooks on the same topics, right? It's being really involved in this. I just don't see the excitement in the industry anymore. I don't see people that are really, you know, enthused to learn for the sake of learning. Um, I see the check the box crowd. I see some overlap with that crowd in the sense that people are like, you know, oh, I'm going to go out there and learn this topic. I'm going to learn, I don't know, decision trees. I'm going to learn machine learning. I'm going to learn quantitative finance. And they just like read a book. They go, yep, I'm done. I know all that material. All right, now next, what should I read? right? It's kind of a check the box one. It's kind of a pretend like you like to feel smart and academic-y, uh, but it's annoying. It's annoying as hell here. And this kind of goes back onto what this guy's pointing at too, on this, the sense of like intuition behind finance, right? You can't model things. You can't be a quant uh, without understanding the intricate workings and pieces behind the scenes that make things tick, Okay. And then when I often see complaints about people don't understand enough finance, though, is another little caveat here, which drives me nuts. Often these people that are making comments, so I don't know about this individual, but many of them don't even understand the finance themselves. And then when quants go into very complex, detailed processes here. So I've been working on a model for over a year. It's killing me. I, I just want it across the finish line, guys. But I'm working on this deep problem that solves like 10 problems or something the business wants all done simultaneously in a cohesive framework and everything's to work perfectly, Um, right? You have to understand the details behind that and then explaining that to the business side often doesn't go well. So this is kind of my caveat here on, you know, the intuition piece and people complaining about it as well on the finance side is you don't understand why some metric is critically important or why some there's like, I'm building something and I get to the point, I'm like, like for me, it's like this really exciting day and I'm so excited and I talk to people at work and often it just like kills my soul. Um, just because they, they don't have the same excitement as I do when I come to some sort of breakthrough, I get some sort of equation or some math or some intuition that's really gleaned off of the the, the process of lurking, looking and learning and writing and reading and going through this whole quant experience in itself, right? That's, that is what is missing, I think, from old quants versus new quants old quants, so like the Emmanuel Derman uh, post here, kind of comment from my discussion with him, um, it was like they were excited, they were amateurs, but they were exploring and they were just learning and doing a bunch of different new things. And like, they were really out there on the cutting edge doing stuff. And yet I think the piece that many students miss in the new realm is they look for the bare minimums and they're trying to somehow get to that cutting edge, but they haven't even figured out the basics here, the core fundamentals here. If you don't love doing the math and stats piece, which I've been to drive home again, math and stats. That's what it's all about here. If you don't love that, you don't eat, breathe, and sleep that, um, you're not going to make it into a career because you're not going to be the guy reading textbooks. You're going to be the guy sitting at a desk, complaining you're not making enough money, complaining your assignments are boring, complaining quant finance isn't what you thought it was, uh, or you're going to be out frauding people like SBF, committing crimes left and right, dreaming up new, I don't know, things that lack all con- concepts of economics and finance and laws and the legal system, like in the crypto space here, because you don't really have that deep down passion to do it. And don't feel bad if you're a student, like you're not necessarily going to have that. Like I didn't have it as undergrad, right? I was lost. I was in, in finance world where people are talking about money and I'm like, who cares? I want to do something exciting and deep and like intellectually stimulating. And then I, you know, I ended up taking a financial engineering course my last semester. And then I realized I went down the wrong career path for my undergrad. So I went and got a uh, applied economics master's degree when I started, you know, of course, financial, there's a whole story on this. Started in financial engineering, transferred into uh, applied economics, because again, they weren't going into the depth. They weren't really enjoying the material and digging it deep here. And oddly enough, the economics department seemed to understand that a bit better here. So if you want advice here on how to be a better quant, the takeaway from this is really just keep learning. I was like, keep working on them, get a textbook. People ask me this all the time, Dimitri, how do you learn so much stuff? How do you know all this? It's literally me just picking up a textbook, just one. You don't need to buy like 20 like I've got sitting around that I just haven't had time to read. Just pick one textbook and just work your way through it. You're not gonna understand all of it, the first time, even the second time. You might not even understand the mechanics very well, but perhaps you'll get some of the mechanics. 
as you read these, as you work in the industry, as you go back and reference things, the intuition comes um, with wisdom and experience of really working through these sorts of issues here. So you're not going to just be able to just like, you know, read a book and get it. It takes a lot of effort and work. At least it does for me. So go out there, do some studying, do some reading, do something fun. If this stuff doesn't excite you and you think, oh, I want to be, you know, in quant finance, or whatever, go, go into something else that's different that excites you. Like going, if trading excites you, go into trading. Don't go into the quant finance side. If, I don't know, working in marketing, if, I don't know, building cars, if, you know, I don't know, doing something different really excites you, go do that. Don't waste your time in quant finance thinking somehow you're going to cash in on this massive payday because the vast majority of people I have met in the quant space, a lot of them end up leaving. They come in for a few years. It's not what they thought it was and they leave. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.